All right, guys, so on the workbench here, we've got a wiring diagram and a bench top setup for a 18 volt power tool conversion. So a lot of these guys, you're taking your old 12 volt battery and you're pitching it and you're putting in one of these really expensive power tool batteries, right? Well, kids are out there driving it and the low voltage protection is in the tool, not the battery. So when you guys drain this down, it, it dies. So I do wanna emphasize that if you guys are doing this on a model that has one of these circuit boards, usually they're black, um, but these are rated for 12 volts. So I wanna emphasize, don't do it. People on the forums are arguing, say they've done it, ran it for two years. Well, it's if you're using a big battery that doesn't have voltage sag, you're gonna fry those. Um, so this is for Peg Perigo and Power Wheels Fisher Price brand wiring harnesses. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm gonna basically leave you guys a diagram, but I will walk you through what is going on with my spaghetti noodle sketch. So right here is your 18 volt battery. Bam. You have your 3D printed power tool adapter, bam, and that's the wires coming out. And what we're using is this relay, instead of using the teeny tiny wimpy relay, this is what I have found on the forums, is you guys are doing this on best choice ride-ons, and you're putting voltage in from the battery, because this is your voltage in, and then it's voltage out is through this one. And what, you take, what you're doing is you're frying this relay because it can't, it can't have that high of an amp draw. So this is rated for 40 amps. Pretty simple right here is your relay, guys. So the 85 and 86 are the coil, and I just tried to explain this on the forum to a guy, which motivated me to make this little video. Basically, this is a switch. So when you have power going to this, Right here, there's a negative and a positive. And when it's activated, which is, I'm using a key, and I'll get into that, which turns it on. Okay, so that's where we're taking the, the amps. Basically, it's just opening and closing this circuit between 87 and 30, okay? So when the key is off, it's not drawing any power, right? But when it's, when you push the gas pedal, Okay, from right here, so power's allowing to go, this is your foot pedal right here, this guy right here. See the resemblance? I got it all labeled, white, red, and orange. Sorry, the Sharpie was uh, a little fuzzy there. So power is traveling through, and in the switch, hopefully you guys can see that. The top one is normally open, okay? So there's nothing going on with that. So when you press this, plunger, boom, it closes the circuit, right? So power is going in, clicking, and then it's going out to your shifter, which is right here. And the power goes into the center pins of the switch, guys. That's where power comes in. And then it's um, flip-flopped over. See the diagonals here? When they're crisscrossed, that's reversing polarity, so you get reverse. And this is from a six volt um, Corvette, so it doesn't have the high and low speed, which changes it from series to parallel. Totally different video. So all you need to know is follow the red and black. And here is where the videos that I watched to try to share with people lacked details. Okay, for one, when, and this is an upgrade. So back in the day, before power wheels got cheap, this is a resistor. They used to install a 0.47 ohm resistor in there. So the orange wire coming out of the um, pedal, right here, going into the shifter, we cut that and we installed a half ohm resistor. So what that does is it resists the resistance of the wire to short the motors because it's electro braking. So when you let off, <laughs> 
it dampens the braking because that's where kids are braking the gears is it slams on and it literally skids the tires and people that are putting on bike tire treads or traction they're just braking the gears so that goes there that's what my poor diagram because i kind of actually forgot to put it in the diagram but that is the green resistor and i will have a description in the video for the link okay so that is going out to the shifter, and then from the shifter it goes back to the motors, which isn't in this diagram right here. That would go off this way. Okay, so let's, I, and I also talked about the breaker here, because in the stock battery, the, the breaker's there, so you have to add that so you don't fry your wiring. So on the negative, um, you have it going into this breaker, out, and into the into the shifter and then where you also need to do okay yeah 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 I confused myself um, so I'm not showing the big thick one so that's where we're getting power from the battery and it's going, if you follow this, it's going to the 85 of the contactor. So that's giving it negative power. And then it's also going into this control box. So you can see that that's what's powering this up. And then you just need to make a little jumper that gives it power out. So the power that's coming out when this drops below your set voltage which I'm going to talk about next this disengages um, the relay in here which I was going to set it up with a uh, variable speed or variable voltage um, power supply but picture when this goes below what you set it at this light shuts off okay but this unit stays on which continues to drain your battery and this is the other change that i made up here where it goes in when it dies the kids will need to shut the key off boom and it does kill power so it's not draining the battery continually that was important that I added this Let's see if I can get this nope all right so adding the switch is very important because what if the kid it dies and the kids just leave it out there and you're at work for another eight hours or you're you know whatever you're at grandma's or the kids are at grandma's it's going to continue to drain your battery and it's pointless to have the low voltage protection when it's continuing to drain down even though it's a small amount okay let's talk about the settings so this button right here this is the low voltage cutoff setting okay so if you press it short just real quick that is the voltage that I'm telling this thing to open the relay and cut power out to the right on okay how you adjust that is it's a long press you hold it down for I don't know, two seconds and it starts flashing on the left is going higher voltage on the left is going down in numbers and if you don't um, adjust it goes it saves that number and it goes back to run setting so have to press and hold this again because I was gabbing. All right, so right here, you can go down. This is up to you guys. This is how I set it up. I ran my leaf blower, because it's fall, until my Milwaukee leaf blower would not function. You pull the trigger and it was dead. I came in and I read the negative and positive outside leads and it said it was 17.64, okay? So I know that the tool is telling the battery, hey, you're dead, stop draining. So I set mine 
I think you could technically go lower, but I don't feel comfortable with wasting a $200 battery. So I set it at 17.6. You let it rest, it saves the number, goes back. Now it's telling me that this battery is at 19.7 volts. Okay, so say your kids are going up a hill and it's drawing a bunch of ants, sagging the battery, or it's really close to being dead, and this thing clicks off. Well, they're stranded right there, right? So this one right here is the reset volts. It's telling you how high this voltage needs to be before this thing is reactivated. So you just quick tap. I have it set at two volts, so if it's at 17.7 volts. So basically you take that number and you add it to, so 19.6 and this will reactivate. So yeah. I see a lot of videos where people are doing it at one volt. Oh, that's up. So pretty much once it dies, it's gonna stay dead. So I would recommend leaving it at one volt um, and that way it will continue to activate the circuit. Um, I think I'm getting close to the end of the instructions. Um, a lot of you guys are pretty tech savvy and you can make your own 3D printed adapters. I'm sure that there's files out there. I would highly recommend using some uh, RC silicone wire. I ordered one of these and it came with this um, TTHN or it's high temperatures basically for like house electrical and conduit and it sucks. It's so stiff. So pitch that ordered another one and it's got regular stranded, you know, soft wire. But if you guys are making your own, use uh, RC wire from your hobby shop or um, Amazon. Well, I'll put the link and then you're going to need a variety of crimp connectors and I really like this style of crimper um, you put it right inside the circle and it gives it a nice solid crimp so if you are doing this upgrade for the brake resistor it comes like this and you will have to have some soldering knowledge to solder on little whips and then you can crimp on and put it in your harness and a little trick I do is I do one that's female and one that's positive. So if this goes bad, because if they're constantly on off, on off, on off the brake, these do get hot and you can just bypass it and just put the wiring back the way that it was or replace it. So that's a little tip that I do. Um, and then I use 22 gauge um, silicone wire. It's super easy to strip. Basically you can pinch it with your uh, fingers. And that's what I used for all of the connections for the relay and this is a quick tip I really like these they're piggybacks so it's a female and male into one so you don't have to splice in a bunch of wires under one connector which you can do you can put the small gauge wire inside with it and crimp them both but sometimes they have a tendency to pull out oh made it funny so yeah I like these piggyback ones and you just um, Right here, you can see it. There's one on here, and then I tapped into the negative right here. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Um, the biggest thing is, is I am gonna put a picture in the video. I'll actually I'll do it again. I'll do it right here too. So you can pause it or you can screenshot it and then just follow this diagram and then set your parameters. And this little guy right here, I'll probably put the specs on this too. You can actually go up to a 36 volt um, setup on this. And it isn't a bad idea to do this on your sealed lead acid battery setups too. But um, yeah, I don't really mess with these anymore, but man, so many people are having problems and killing batteries that I wanted to put this video together for you guys. And if you have any questions, I guess, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to help you guys, yeah, guys out as much as I can but I am not a free tech support service for every model out there, which I seem to be getting known for. Um, yeah, so 
If you guys like this video, give us a thumbs up because it gets it out there and circulates and it makes us more motivated to make other how-to videos. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and CKC out.